Britain is on the march in today's NTW3 battle, and they are here, the Red Coats, ready to fight for king and country and all things British. And we have a glorious 3v3 here. We have two British uh, 1811 UK Portugal armies. Uh, they are being joined by a 1812 Russia uh, army as well. And yeah, this is a pretty fun 3v3 that we did a couple of weeks ago on a, a stream. And it starts off with a bang. It's a really high, intense uh, battle. Really good fun. And yeah, kind of hard to tell who's going to win it uh, for long periods of this game. And we've got some cool uh, students. We've got the Cameron Highlanders here. I hope you see the eight man unit. It's awesome. Already the British and the French looking like they're going to be uh, trying to battle for this hill here. We have some, uh, some King German uh, Legion like Lil Hussai unit there. And we've got some uh, Portuguese Cav as well on the top of the hill. Looks like they get going to be matching off with looks like some uh, sort of like Hussars or um, actually they might be uh, Chevrolet um, uh, Chasseur Cheval is what I'm trying to say I was, I'm using 12-12 uh, references I'm thinking of French Chevrolets from that we're not in the medieval period anymore Pope we're now in uh, the Napoleonic period absolutely and we have some glorious Dragoons here big Dragoon here as well actually uh, setting up here looks like more Dragoons as well and they're being followed up by it looks like a it looks like a general staff actually maybe it's a general staff and a cavalry battalion maybe uh, going forward here i can't remember which french periods we have i think there is a uh, spanish campaign maybe 1811 uh, eight point uh, i also think um potentially we do have uh, a, a 1799 i think an italian campaign 1799 um but yeah i, I can't remember what the other one was off the top of my head but it um, uh, the French have two armies all the way over here already, very quickly. But the other French army is a long, long way away, and they've got a lot of walking to do. You can see where the general is. He's all the way over there. And yeah, he's got to uh, travel all the way to this side. All the allies could spawn um, on this sort of side of the map, and they're managing to get a 3v2 early on with the French here. The French now have to try and hold, and uh, or be super aggressive, maybe try to take this hill and then hold on that before the uh, Russian and British armies arrive. I mean, if they can deal with this British army here, uh, quickly, uh, then they could maybe then be able to hold them until the other French army arrives uh, to support them against Russia and the British here. I mean, Russia has brought forward some Dragoons, got some um, uh, St. Petersburg ones and Moscow, We've got some good Dragoon units, some big Dragoon units as well, 86, 66, yeah, the big, big units uh, coming forward. And it looks like Britain now is bringing forward his uh, line infantry. The good thing with the Brits is that they can all form square, so I mean, any cav charges, they're going to be able to sort of sort them out. Um, I was playing against one as it was the stream battle. I think I was playing against this British army actually here at the front lines. Um, it was a pretty fun one. It looks like early doors here, we're going to see some cav charges. And looks like it's a Lance, you know. It's a Polish Lance, you know. I think that might make it Russia 1812 as well. Like 1812 campaign, I think, like a Russia Central. It looks like they're going to kill that off pretty quickly there. Uh, and it looks like uh, we're going to see other cav charges. That's from the uh, French army that's uh, way off in the distance, I think. He's managed to get cav over here. Some tiny little cav units. They have now arrived. And as you can see, the French have lost that first cav unit. First blood to the Russians. And uh, yeah, the French bring forward more cavalry here. Looks like to try and scare them. We've got some Italian dragoons. And just some typical French dragoons as well. But there you go, the line infantry of Britain now opening up some glorious volleys. Their strength is shooting for the British. They can fire three rounds a minute. They fire two. I mean, at least they can in sharp anyway. Uh, but uh, they do have good reloading skill in this as well. You see, French dudes coming forward here, getting blasted by the British line. And it looks like uh, squares are going to be And look, I mean, the French units uh, kind of went all over the place. Looks like the French one is already engaging over here. the guard actually I think potentially looking their uniforms they could be a good volley from the Portuguese there really nice volley into their face that's getting rid of that French unit there you can see multiple French units going in for a charge here they go one after the other they are doing some really good damage there are the uh, are the Brits I mean that's what they're going to do get a good volley off weaken the French numbers before they go into uh, melee action that's a great idea unit for sure that's getting in amongst uh, but the Holy Boys, a very appropriate name I feel like for this channel. Uh, actually looks like some uh, French cavalry some that having some success there, They're riding some of the goons. They are returning as well. Uh, but the British line is also buckling. As you can see here, the Cambridgeshire puts on the break. 
Uh, guns are under threat as well if the French will break through. He's watching Starfall from Square. It looks like they're very high. They just won't get this one. The other ones could not, though. The last thing the Brit British and the Russians want to do, though, is charge the back of their own lines and try and just break uh, try and break through that way. That's not going to work. It's the right road, men. Console of the guard for sure. These fighters are refusing to break. Even though they're being side charged by Portuguese cap. There you go. Finally break. That's the console of the guard gone. And that's a lot of other uh, French infantry also breaking there as well. Good resolute uh, stand from the British to start off this fight. The Portuguese are now going to do the same this time. And they are doing it. There you go. The sounded retreat has been made by... And the uh, Dragoons are running. And so is some of this infantry now by the looks of it. And that looks like the first sort of assault, and that looks like the big throw of the dice there by the French to try and dislodge the British uh, by like by speed, basically. Now it's going to have to be tactical moves uh, being uh -huh. done. Looks like some Russian skirmishes here. They're just being grabbed by the, by the Polish lances. I mean, it's a small win against uh, France, but they did uh, re-lose that unit, I guess. It had re-rallied, but it uh, wasn't going to be the same again after being rounded once. So it get, got used to get rid of a skirmisher. Titan Dragoon is a big unit. I think they technically are heavy cav as well down. A heavy uh, uh, like Dragoons for the Italians. Or maybe it's just the guard uh, Dragoons. Uh, might be a, a heavy cav. Certainly there is like a heavy cav unit. It doesn't look like a heavy cav unit for the Italians. It might just be their normal Dragoons. I'm not sure. Yet yeah, now it's heading into a bit of a line fight. I think this name is more Britain. I mean, uh, 1799. Definitely more of a melee. I mean, most of the French factions are more melee orientated. The big guns coming up here, don't they? They really have a great action, actually. Yeah, they can see like the tops of the British units eventually, but yeah, they actually the guns are not in a great spot mode. Or though they might be. Got a uh, guard artillery here. This is like a uh, sort of like uh, guard console artillery, I think, for 1799. It's, really it's a, always a must have if you play against like uh, 1799. Uh, Italy or France. And yeah, Britain is coming forward, but by doing so, they are getting closer and closer to those uh, those guns. You have to get rid of those some way or another. And they're actually bringing forward their own guns as well. But, I mean, they're redlining. They are getting here and he's routing. Good volleys here from the British. Could you know route them? I'm going to see some uh, six pounders as well moving forward. But the Russians, they're going to put those in. So both sides are going to try and use Marcy Julian here by the looks of it. And it looks like the looks like the French are going to try and go for the British artillery here. Will they get it? Potentially. No, they will. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. I feel like they should have destroyed those artillery pieces immediately. They didn't. The carriages are going to be dislodged. The, the artillery is going to be stuck here, but they have saved the gun. The squares there from the Portuguese is enough to. Uh, Keep that cavern bay and they actually retreated. Yeah, the Brits uh, might need to protect that objective a little bit better. I have got uh, cavalry behind them. But yeah, mission succeeded for the coalition. All the armies have united up now, and uh, yeah, 1812 and the other uh, 1811 British army is going to have got lots of Scots in this one, ready to do some glorious damage. I do love the uh, Scottish uniforms. The British the big unit, the three man unit. We have got uh, Grenadiers of the Guard as well here. So uh, you've got some very, very good units here being brought by uh, the coalition. I imagine the French have got some some similar sort of type units as well on their side. I mean, we saw the, gu the console of the guard, uh, the guard of the console, not the console of the guard, that's for sure. Uh, but yes, yeah, so they got they had some good units, they might return, you never know. Yes, if you're enjoying the NTW3 action and would like to more, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. It really does help out the channel, guys. And yeah, if you ever want to send in any of your own replays to have the feature on the channel, especially now that I've uh, we've got a new update on the way, uh, 9.8, uh, 8, 9.6 um, is, is out. In fact, it's not on the way, it's out. Uh, if you uh, want to uh, send in your own replays, I'm looking for new replays for that. At the moment, I'm just still finishing up a few other uh, nine, uh, 95s I would like to do. This one, and it's another uh, historical battle. I, I feel like I'd like to cover before I am um, done with 9.5. I've got a couple of 9.6s, but uh, yeah, just getting through these last few 9.5s. And there you go, Cav charge while we're ch chatting there. Failed again on the artillery pieces. They hold strong the artillery, actually, routing them themselves by the looks of it. 
But the uh, the Portuguese cab there uh, just goes in also ready and uh, ready to go. We've got some pretty good British units out here on the left as well. We've got the Scarlet Lancers, the uh, 16th Light Dragoons, and we also have the First World Dragoon uh, Guards. These are the you know, Royal. They are from the Portuguese. We've got heavy cab for the Brits, uh, and then also some very good Light uh, Dragoons, which are pretty much, I think, Light Dragoons are pretty much at the same caliber as French Dragoons, and then British he uh, Dragoons are pretty much heavy cab. They are a heavy cab unit. So, um, it's a French, French cab, um, sorry, French Dragoons, you probably count as like medium, really. I'd say they're like medium cavalry. Somewhere in between light Dragoons and also Kiras. They're somewhere in there. They're supposed to be mounted uh, infantry. Uh, but they don't do much duties of being uh, an infantry unit. The Russians there just getting a couple of volleys off. They're not so much a, uh, a volley faction, they definitely won't be enjoying this, and they certainly won't be enjoying this. Uh, our Surrey piece here is just probably shredding their units. Yeah, look at that red lining, orange lining. These guys are not happy. A little, a little, little uh, uh, Ulan unit here. I wonder whether that's going to go for the artillery in a moment. But yeah, France, I think, is uh, ready for it. He's got big Dragoon unit, unit here ready to go and smother that Ulan dare come forward. Uh, this British army is actually moving quite steadily to the left here. Lots of uh, melee units as well. Cold streams here. We've got the Scott Foot Guard, uh, Highland uh, Foot as well, and then uh, I think we also have the uh, Highland Light Foot, the SA Regiment. Uh, solid melee unit. I think they have like 16 melee attack. And there's other big uh, Highland units as well. The yeah, Cameron Highlanders as well there. And some of these Portuguese, I don't think these ones particularly, uh, have like Pretty high melee, like 15, 16. And the Black Watch, well, yeah, we have all the Highlanders here. Far like the Gordon. Uh, but yeah, I think if I can find it, I'll find the Portuguese uh, unit in mine. Uh, it's not that one. It's this one here, the 21st uh, the Major. These guys have like, they can't square, and there's only 58 of them. They have like insane melee stats. So they actually could really work quite nicely as a unit put into a building. Um, or just a, a little grenadier unit if you ever needed one. And they're pretty cheap. And I did not realise they were a, a thing. So I definitely will be bringing them a bit more if I ever play this as like Britain again. I think they're certainly a, a decent little asset. So Britain moving forward here with the lines. So this is going to get right in the face of the Brit uh, in the face of the French blasting kingdom come. And you can see, I mean, this unit here. A French essentially made that is got body scattered all over the place and really destroyed unit. Here we go, uh, Hussars going in. Getting rid of the artillery. Can they get out of there again? No, they can't. The little unit there has done done its work. But they got rid of the artillery piece one of them here. Uh, the French might counter charge here to try and go for the British artillery or the Portuguese artillery to try and get rid of them. Uh, not surprising to be honest. And yeah, I think with a rear charge there with the Portuguese cap, that will probably route both Britain and France there. Um, so yeah, there you go. A, a, a trade with artillery, but I mean the French lost another cab unit. I guess it's a bit more of a, a better trade for the, for the Brits for now, but we will see. Looks like more French units trying to route over here. 1799 really struggling in this line fight. But also, I mean, Britain's units here are pretty small, 33, 30, yeah, a lot of, like, units down to, like, low 30s. Russia, he's going to have to take some of the slack. He's got some big units in reserve here, like, reserve divisions. Probably aren't that great, but probably, like, provisional infantry, really. But they got numbers. That's what we're going to need. Yeah, it's not, like, called provisional infantry here. It's just in the front lines, yeah. France still looking very strong, though. And what is this? Oh, we have a Kirassia unit here for the French. So yeah, they got some nasty units still to come forward. Looks like a lot of looks like a lot of Polish units as well. So yeah, this is definitely giving uh, vibes of like sort of uh, like um I was gonna say army group center feels very much more German. Uh, but yeah like the uh, central sort of like 1812 army. I feel like it's sort of giving vibes of yeah big Jurassic units, Poles, that's not what it is. What have we got to forward here? Oh, Grenadiers, quite a few, quite a lot of Grenadiers, yeah, look at this, column after column of Grenadiers, one, two, three, four, I think, Grenadiers going in, and yeah, here we go, Kirassi is also being committed, the 
going to counter charge the line of Russian, trying to break up the charge here. I guess these other guys have got some volley. Not a bad idea, that actually kind of might have worked a little bit. They've certainly felled some of those trashes. One reserve infantry unit lost. Uh, I mean, if, we, if that's all it is, and we won, and uh, one infantry unit in mind, just feel like trash is great for The uh, Grenadiers weren't really in position, but still moving forward, trying to assist their heavy cab uh, colleagues. So look at how the, the Russians are set up here, line after line of infantry at different angles here. And uh, they're able to just pour fire onto the crest while they engage one at a time. So each volley, yeah, there's only five or six crests to drop. Still green lining, which is great, but, you know, they're, they're, they're taking a lot of casualties. And here go the Grenadiers. They're going to, you know, try and cause a bit of problems for the uh, Russians. Try and silence some of these men that are firing into the crests. Here comes the uh, the French crowd as well. I think the Russian player is busy elsewhere, microing here, and he's not paying attention to this. I don't know whether they're going to do much. Not really. Reserve infantry can't form square. That's going to get mowed down by uh, French dragoons again, and I think it's going to have to have the same happen here. Whether these guys are going to get marched, should have got marched out uh, to safety, or whether the yeah, cab needs to be committed. The dragoons here, various Russian dragoons that I think could have been committed. Yeah, the reserve infantry still firing, it looks like uh, we've got Italian dragoons going in. They're stopping Russians. And then here we go again. Yeah, in goes more French dragoons and provisional stuff. The Russians setting in some of their uh, dragoons. The Pinskov unit. They're routing some French cabs. They might get this one as well, but I mean, the, for the Russians, have got two units routing around them. That's probably putting them at a disadvantage. And it's, yeah, still see that the grasses are in here. The Russians are kind of breaking in a few areas. Grenadiers still going in. It's a Brits now. And looks like we've got the uh, King's German Legion moving as well. The Sars trying to smother these guys. The French can stop, save the artillery. I mean, a good volley there. That might have killed a fair few of the Hussars, but also did a lot of damage to the uh, Grenadiers there, and that's just routing just about everything, actually. And look at that, Russians routing across the front now with all of these Curassiers uh, and Grenadiers being mixed in with the... Uh, mixed in. The Dragoons, I think, helped out a little bit. Russians still got a fair few of these reservists, and he's still got some of the uh, elite Grenadiers. But uh, it's not... He's certainly been very bloodied up here, you can say. And look at this. France has got, like, troops all the way back here, just trying to get in behind. He's just trying to go down this road, get in behind the uh, coalition forces. Not a bad little move. France moving forward here. They think they uh, now is the time to advance for them. Boys, he's infantry holding strong. Keep firing, boys. You trained by the Brits. It's three shots a minute. Nothing less. The artillery here for the Russians is still in play. About to get silenced now by some holes by the of them. And they're not even poles, it's just some random German, the random Western family. And they're still, whatever it is, they'll route this gun. Big old unit of infantry. Not going to stop them. Risk is, though, that a lot of these uh, infantry units here might be going to melee to stop the, stop the French. The Russians, I don't know whether they will go into melee. These uh, reservists here, I can't imagine a Zach break. Uh, we have got some more grenadiers here, the uh, Tavrida, and looks like a, another sort of like a grenadier unit. Well, the Russians, they're all going in. And that's what the Russians want. They want a melee fight. We said the French, but I don't know about like the uh, uh, the Allied troops. The Poles definitely are okay in melee. Some of, them, some of the units are okay in melee. But yeah, some of the like, Western melee is probably not. That's the Russians got routed here, though. Yeah, that could really be even got routed. I don't know, that's a yeah, resurgence. Yeah, the looks of like the Russians are going in. The guard are in here. They're fighting. They're fighting the, uh, the French one, it is. Probably the best you can want to challenge for those Frenchies. And there you go, they've routed them instantly, pretty much. Unit here, maybe? I'm not quite sure what unit that is in the French fight, never again. No, if it's going to win against the Russians in melee. The Russians are certainly throwing back to the There's a lot of really odd uniforms that suggest German, German allied troops. Grenadier Tavrida, who's a big real set for general. He's uh, getting very close. And yeah, yeah, the British on this side have absolutely stormed through. 
I do apologize, I kind of missed that. I've been kind of focused on the chaos of Russia, but yeah. I mean, they've stormed through. I mean, I think it's mainly through uh, just shooting their way through. It's more like they've gone into melee. Most of these guys seem fairly healthy. Healthier than they would be if they'd been in melee. And so, yeah, they just blast their way through. As you can see, yeah, we've got the Dragoon Guards going in. Hacking and slashing. Yeah, Russia, Russia's kind of stabilized a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of French troops though on this flank here that are still to be a problem. It looks like the battle is sort of swiveling a little bit. Seems like the both sides now could hold, uh, like, parts of the hill. Certainly the uh, British and the Russians will hold probably the top of the hill. The French is probably just at the edge of it. What is this? Oh, it's a uh, Polish grenadier. You know. oh, very nice try and hold these boys at bay they are. Yeah, now Britain, Britain and Russia need to uh, re-rally, re-gather. Re we think what their strategy is going to be here. Yeah, I don't know if they really did go to melee these, these, uh, these Brits. They have been, yeah. It might be about to by the looks of it. Thailand foot are getting very close to the front lines of the uh, French over here. I mean, the best time to attack them might be before they reorganize. Like grenadiers as well. This unit here, so that's gonna be something to This unit, it looks, it's, I don't think it's technically a grenadier, but it's called the Guard of Paris. Um, it's a pretty good unit, it has pretty good nice. I don't know if they technically come under a, a grenadier, uh, like, an attempt a grenadier unit. But they're just a very good line of troops. They do have the look of grenadiers. There's another, I think these are also grenadiers. You should tell us the red sort of like um, shoulder pads and all sorts of stuff. Really yeah, I'd actually, I think all of those units there, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, probably all, two, uh, all, all grenadiers. I mean, that's really there for the uh, coalition. I mean, the Poles have got blasted by their own artillery. It's brilliant. Uh, the French, yeah, look like they're stabilizing fairly well. They've got a decent center rebuilding up here. They've still got a decent amount of cab as well. A line fight again against Britain, and there's still a lot of Brit. I don't know if that's great. Yeah, it's so big, you just Portuguese support here, and they'd be the great chaff that you want to sort of block uh, shots hitting your more prize units. The prize units being something like the Cameron Highlanders here, 168 Scots. They look like they're advancing pretty quickly, as are a lot more of these units. Are we doing some more of these uh, sort of grenadier type units here? Yeah, 21st Malenka. They're going in now, probably going to get routed here, I think, pretty quickly. That, that kind of thing looks like a good job. There you go, more Portuguese infantry going in. I don't know how great they are. See, did they break through? I mean, they're redlining these guys, but I think that's because of the help of the cold streams here. French Cav coming in to ruin the party. Looks like that's going to help break some of the set infantry up. Uh, I think there's a camera in the foot here in my form spray in a second. I mean, artillery as well. This is so blasting away. Looks like it has been shooting friendly, uh, friendly cab though, as well as also uh, British infantry. And yeah, some of the infantry broke here. The Portuguese getting in. Looks like they're getting a general. I don't know where the rest of the general staff is, but uh, it looks like a general staff that is engaged with Portuguese. And he routes, you know, there's only two of them left. Uh, I did not realize how that was how low the general staff was, but yeah, it looks like he's routed. That's a bit of a uh, kind of a poor decision there from the French player. Whether he's out of men, I don't know. Yeah, this uh, Portuguese infantry now removed from the battlefield. Whether the Brits have any sort of, the Brits and the Russians have any light cavalry to go get these guns, there's multiple guns here, they're just absolutely shelling this uh, Portuguese army, this Anglo Portuguese army. And then over on this side here, looks like. Light tunes engage against some more French guys. Looks like more like Italian type infantry. Broken through. But I think they, they might route themselves. I mean, if not, they're going to get routed when this caveat activates. There you go, yeah, the Italian captain again saves the day, but I think they helped route one of the, uh, the French units. 
well. Whether the Italian camp now is going to... Oh no, I thought maybe they were going to swing up. Uh, but maybe they go better than the Italian British troops. They are pretty much all able to square. Only a few, like... There's like one or two Redcoat units that can't square. And then there's like... Well, most, like I'd say 50% of the Portuguese units can't either. Here we go though. Queensland Dragoons going in. They are going to try and silence these guns. With the French Dragoons coming in there, they, yeah, they should help route their own uh, artillery, and then they should then route the Light Dragoons in a moment. But that's one gun uh, in place to remove. Whether they could have engaged both, uh, I don't know. Whether that would have been possible. I just stretched out the unit enough and then tried to, to make connection with both so that force them to uh, both lose their carriages. Jurassic is still alive for those wondering. They are still very much alive and intact. Still uh, looking for an opportunity to try and break through the British lines. Or maybe break through those Russian ones again. But uh, if they want to do that, they're going to go all the way to this right flank. That's why Russia is now occupying. Along with, it looks like, the help of some uh, Portuguese cab here. So, I guess they will be going in shortly, I'd imagine, to try. I mean, a 2v1 against the French cab here. It's a Stragoon. How's this line fight going? Slightly, losing slightly. Actually, yeah, the British not winning, winning slightly. Losing slightly, winning slightly. Winning slightly. I'd hope that most of the guys are winning. Losing slightly, oh, maybe not. It's a bit 50 50 actually. Um, but I would have thought that most of these would be now choose the French. Grown weary, sir. Here we go, there's a bit of an aggressive push now going on this side here. Portuguese Cav going in against the Dragoons. It's an isolated little Dragoon unit that's easily got. There you go, looks like a side charge on the second one. Should deal the death blow and get rid of that Dragoon unit there. And now with the Portuguese there, victorious, they can flank on around. There's no more French cab on this side here at the moment, so they can flank on around. I think, yeah, most of the French cab is on the right flank, including those cuirassiers, which I don't know where they've got to, or they are just really very much on the uh, extreme now. And that's a strong flank there. I mean, the uh, Time Dragoons and the cuirassiers, what they're going up against. The Royal Dragoons of uh, Britain, I mean, it's a tiny little unit, they definitely have to swamp by these two if they decide to go but it looks like the French might be about to go in here it looks like yeah, the dress is going to engage and there you go the clash of dragoons as well Italians and royal dragoons both red lining and the Italians win that fight there you go the royal dragoons probably a little bit too tired and also pretty weakened much finish off it and there you go Portuguese infantry also been charged by the Italians a great double haul for them the uh, Kyrgyz is there scared off by the squareable infantry of uh, Portugal as well and I don't know actually to be fair this uh, seven, number 7 the Super Battle is holding quite nicely here comes some uh, Grenadiers though I mean, hitting squares as one of the targets, the guard of Paris going in. Yeah, here we go, look at this. Pulling units out of the line to help try and defend the rear lines. Uh, just to stop these Portuguese cab from running rampant. I mean, also, I mean, those Jurassic have been killed off. Now means that, and also looks like the edge of be weakened, but not killed necessarily. So let's now kind of, like, give have superiority to the coalition. Ever so slightly I'd say. Ever so slightly. Not much in reserve for Brits and the Russians. 
Rush to the floor, they should be able to back towards the right after just moving to the left. A lot of marching in here today. I can tell the artillery as well. Is that lumbering up? I really don't know. Certainly, do a lot of fire from the uh, British units here. They're just blasting away. Still, the afternoon, and the uh, Portuguese won again. Looks like more French cavs have been routed. And I think that must be less blast of French cavs. I know the Italians are still alive. Um, but yeah, pretty much all the French cabs gone. Now there's Portuguese cabs in the back line for French. The French don't have the joy of being able to uh, square as much as the uh, Brits. So, uh, these guys might have a lot more joy to rear charging the French. And they could cause a mass route or they could go for generals. But yeah, certainly the killing blow is now. And uh, yeah, I mean all they need to do now is the Brits are just send in some tiny little units. They try and melee the guns just get rid of them that way. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, Britain and Russia is going to be an all-out assault. Russia actually is managing to catch some of these uh, these French units that are where they bother to run. Yeah, more Grenadiers getting stuck in here. And there you go. Actually, that, uh, the gun held, I think. Did it run? No, I think it, I think it, uh, they got broken by a uh, line infantry. But they did uh, get rid of the gun, so that's a big, bit of a win there for the, uh, for the Brits. Russians again still chasing down Italians here. And again, looks like more reserve division going in. Looks like, yeah, I mean, all he's got left actually looks like a lot of reserve division. What's the charge in here? This would be a great idea, I imagine. No, it's not. It's reserve infantry. You might actually win that. I don't know. Defense has got a general left. I mean, he's being shot on the side. The Russians are kind of in retreat there. Russia here. Kind of getting stalled these Italians are holding longer than I thought they were. They're kind of thin there though. And here we go. Portuguese cab going in. Uh, general being killed. Whose general got killed? Oh here. Was there typically a general in there? Or was he already retreating? He might have already been retreating but yeah. General got killed off there. I think by the charge of the Portuguese cab. So uh, I guess that's uh, pretty much, I mean, it looks like almost a complete capitulation inside here. And the line infantry going in. General being killed. Oh, the French general here managed to assassinate the British one. That's quite funny. I mean, could they get any more? I mean, there's a nine pounder there. There's another general there, but I don't think he's will get him, but I don't know. Maybe they will. The Highlanders doing their bit. Blackwatch losing 10 men in this game. Very nice. There you go. Britain managed to win uh, with, in melee with the support of Russia, of course. Russia is a massive help. Uh, there you go. Actually, they have managed to get the other general. This French guy. What a mad lad. Skirmish because he's just turn and face and get rid of this general. But instead the general's having to like battle it out to the death here. There you go, the French route. Maybe my this general here, I think which is mine, I think he's gonna have to try and survive. He's, he's now getting shot for his for his Jews by their general There you go, I think that's a, their general dead, but yeah, he's now getting shot by his own friendly skirmishes. He might route any moment. Orders understood. Let's see. No, he might just hold. Might just be okay. Very lucky. Nope, there you're out. What a shame, what a shame. Um, yeah, I'll quickly make some uh, fast forwards. Because it looks like there's a tiny little unit back here that is the only problem. It looks like it's a skirmisher. Good way for that to uh, be committed and killed off. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this NTW3 stream. It certainly was a fun one. I enjoyed it. Uh, it certainly was interesting to see uh, Britain sort of melee for a bit and, you know, actually ha hold its ground in a bit of a melee fight. So it's nice to show off um, just some more stream battles as well. For those of you that miss out on the streams, they're, they're usually on a Monday this uh, this week. I've been, uh, like, I'm recording this anyway. I I've been a bit poor and it looks like it's going to be on a Sunday instead. Um, but yeah, if you ever want to get involved in an NTW3 stream, 
Oh, all like I said, send in a replay. Do feel free to uh, join uh, my Discord. The link is down below in the description. It's the best place to go to get involved in any sort of thing like that. And uh, yeah, we're just now waiting for this poor skirmisher to get killed off. Uh, how far away? Oh, there's, there's British cav on the way. That's good. Good to see some of the cavs survive. I don't think Russia or the other British players still got any cav alive. But uh, yeah, these Portuguese cav here has done great work. They've probably got some decent chevrons going out. Oh, I hope they don't go into the building. Don't go into the building, France. At this point, you know the game's done. You might as well just uh, quicken up. There you go. Uh, British cab or Portuguese cab running down the skirmishes. And that should be GG there for Britain and Russia. And there you go. Hopefully, the end results are up on your screen. You can have a look at this. This is from my perspective. I was playing as one of the British armies. I think it was uh, the one that was get, got attacked first. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much to everyone that took part in this one. It was a fun one. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was, yeah, a great battle to uh, to do. And that, uh, had great fun uh, in this stream as well. We got some great battles out of it. But yeah, we'll have a quick look at some of the unit stats as well. Uh, I've got 180 kills with my King's German Legion there, 145 with the uh, Cavalry Battalion, uh, 140 kills with the King's German Legion, 134 with the uh, Cavalry Battalion there, 126 kills, 121. I don't think there's too much farming going on. I think I just these guys saw a lot of action. The yeah, Dragoon Guards getting 120 kills, not bad for them either. Um, but yeah, there are the rest of the kills if you want to have a look at them. What got the most chevrons? Oh, probably these guys at the top here. They got like three. But yeah, well done to everyone that took part. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy. Do check out the other battles appearing on your screen if you haven't checked those out. There's some epic ones there. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.